you remember when Colin Furs built the Rhino tank and then he got stuck in a ditch and had to pull it out with a JCB? The concept was pioneered by Ellie Agnides in the 1950s, the idea being that due to the dome-shaped wheels, the more you sink into the mud, the more grip it has. Colin converted a dumper truck to build his version of the Rhino, but it originally had much smaller wheels. The motors are hydraulic, but there wasn't enough torque to turn the bigger diameter wheels when it was really needed due to the increased leverage. My plan is to make a slightly smaller version and it will be electric, and I'll try to get a large reduction from the motors to the wheels so I can get more relative torque. I'm also going to have a servo control camber angle so it can transform. I'm making my wheels out of flat sheet material, which is the same way Colin did it, other than mine are made of plywood, which is quite a good material to use because it's really easy to get hold of, and it's really easy to cut, and I don't have to fabricate massive heavy steel things, it's also going to be lighter. So we've got lots of parts to make here, we've got lots of these circle parts, and then we've got lots of quarter parts to go and put all the fins in the wheels. Cut out a massive HTD8 profile pulley and that's going to fit on the wheel and the belt is going to go as close to the circumference of the wheel as possible to apply the most leverage. And I've got this little shim that goes on the outside to stop the belt falling off. Unlike Collins, I'm going to leave my wheels completely open rather than filling in all those segments with a sheet, and hopefully that will give it more grip and also it won't fill up with water that I'll have to drain out somehow. So basically I'm just putting this edging strip on to kind of edge that plywood to make it stronger, and hopefully that should be it really, and it'll really test the principle of the grip on these wheels. There's four of them, but they don't fit on the table. Now we're going to use some metal to make the chassis. It's time to cut some lengths of steel, so I've set up this jig with a block clamp to the bench so I can get all of the pieces exactly the right length. This is a multi-material blade that will cut through all sorts of stuff, including aluminium and steel, so no problems there. Just deburr the edges so that we get all of those rough bits off, then we've got a collection of bits of metal. So that leaves me with an articulation this way, and also this way, which is the middle articulation of the whole vehicle. I love metal, but now it's time for some plastic. I'm printing some pretty massive parts here with a 1.2mm nozzle, and these are going to be the main articulation points for the camber angle. You've already seen this part, which is the bearing holder for the end of that wheel. These parts are bushings, which fit in those first parts so we can move that camber angle out. There's no bearing because it's not really high RPM. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. It makes it much easier to get all the projects done in time when I've got so many printers to print on in parallel. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link and I'll get a small commission. Those 3D printed bushings fit on the end of my square axles, and the round axles can then be pivoted with that piece sticking up that's going to have the motor mounted on it. 
I love the feeling of solid metal attached to solid plastic. Now we can put the whole chassis together, so it's chassis time! Yeah, I actually put those bushings in the wrong place. I was supposed to leave a piece sticking out to make everything the right length, so I had to unbolt them and move them, but never mind. We now have the ability to move those axles and leave them to vary the camber angle on both of them so they move freely with those bushings in their plastic holes, but also it can just pivot all over the place at the moment so we need some sort of actuator to control it and hold it all in place. Yep, it's some big linear actuators from Gimson Robotics. These are quite fast ones at 40 millimeters a second and they do about 75 kilograms of force, which is 750 newton meters. They're actually pretty quick compared to most linear actuators. So these are gonna be absolutely perfect for moving that camber angle in and out. So now the chassis can bend in the middle so the whole thing can steer just like Colin's version but also one side of it can tip and that means all four wheels should stay on the ground so we don't get them grounded and one spinning in the air. I've got bearings on all my wheels so thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this, check out simplybearings.co.uk. It's time to install some motors to power the wheels and those are going to use these drive belts. Yes, we're going to be using O-Drives. These are O-Drive branded motors which are 8325s and they're 100 kV and they're pretty pokey. We're using the O-Drive S1 which is the relatively new style driver. There's a magnet on the back of the motor and an encoder built onto the board. So that can fit right on the back. There is a kit which comes with all of the mountings. So assembling all of them, we can see that we've got that board sandwiched on the back. We can use the O-Drive GUI, which is now web-based, unlike the old text tool you had to use, to go and configure that motor and calibrate it and also control it and test it. So it's plugged in with USB-C. The motor's pretty talky, even on its own there you can see it wants to tip over, and I could tip it over if I really did what I wanted with it, but we've got quite a lot of power, around 1500 watts a motor. So I've got all of these mounted onto those red 3D prints you saw being made, and I've got a T5 pulley fitted on the front there. On the bottom I've got an aluminium piece and there's a hole to mount it on that 5025 steel. So we've got a front piece which goes on, there's two bits of studding bolted into there, one piece is going to support that T5 pulley so it doesn't just shear off and the other one is going to support an intermediate gear to drive the wheel. So that has a T5 pulley on the bottom and a smaller HDD8 profile on the top. And it's got bearings in it either side just like a skateboard wheel. So as I turn the motor of course it turns that big pulley and that turns the smaller pulley which is going to drive the wheel. I've put idlers in each side there as well to tension that T5 belt. But before we carry on with the assembly there, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PV Case. Now, PV Case is a next generation AutoCAD based piece of PV software focused on automation and accuracy. It allows you to simulate the actual location of a solar plant from the earliest stages of planning, incorporating 3D topographical data points. So PV Case is the ideal choice for companies undertaking large commercial and industrial projects as well as utility scale plants. The software really is intuitive and has streamlined processes to help reduce the learning curve and improve productivity. Features include everything from the prototyping stage, electrical design, stringing, shading and terrain analysis, and automatic generation of construction documentation. So PV Case really does enable engineers and designers to take the project all the way through from its initial conception to the procurement phase. This really is an end-to-end -end approach which saves time and reduces errors. It's streamlined so you don't need to switch between tools or other software platforms. 
Other features include slope analysis, piling and collision analysis, automated topographical 3D cabling, side-by-side -side design comparison, and rapid 3D building preparation. Try VVKs for free by following the link in the description to this video. So that slots onto that 5025 steel, and it can be moved up and down to tension the belt, which is going to go down to the wheel. So there's our intermediate pulley, and obviously as we pull it up, it's going to tension that bottom belt. So those are fitted onto all of those uprights, and I've got these little wedges which I made exactly the right size and pushed in so that we can tension the HTD belts. So that should avoid any potential belt slip both on the T5 and on the HDD8, and that's looking pretty tight as you can see there. So I don't think there's going to be any problems with those big chunky pulleys. Right, let's power one of these up so we can use the O-Drive tool to control it. So these are roughly 100 to 1. And the motor does around 60 to 70 turns or revolutions per second. So we should have loads of torque. And I've also got the ability to stop and start those wheels and reverse them. And we're using regen basically to recharge the battery to get rid of all that energy. So that seems to operate pretty reliably. And I think that's going to be fine. So we've got that belt you can see is slightly rubbing on the wheel. I do need to move that wheel out on its axle so I can fine tune the belt position. But otherwise I'm pretty happy of how it's going and that motor is currently moving at maximum speed. The rest of the electronics for this project look like this, which is four BTS 7960 motor drivers which are going to control all of those linear actuators, a radio control receiver and also a Teensy 4.1 and I've used that because it has CAN bus built into it. But you do need the external CAN bus transceiver which is that little extra board there but that means we can daisy chain all of the O drives. So I've got all the batteries in the middle there and we're going to be running this on around 50 volts and then the electronics just slot on the middle and all of this stuff is high up so that we don't get water in it basically when we run through the ditch. That's my power distribution but there is a cover to cover that because 50 volts is actually quite dangerous. All my actuators plug into these connectors that were provided and I'm using XLRs to daisy chain the CAN bus between all of the O drives. I just have to remember to keep all of those connectors high up and zip tie them up or something so they're out of the water. So that's CAN bus and ground going into each of the O drives and that grey cable is a shielded cable so we shouldn't have any problems with interference. And as usual I'm going to be using my universal remote that I made in another project to control this which is a DSM remote. So yeah, it's pretty pokey, it's probably faster than it needs to be because it's a crawler and not a racing car. And steering at the moment is just running the outside wheels faster. So it's basically not got any active steering actuator. It's a bit tricky to drive in my kitchen. So it's time to pack it up in the van and we're going to go off to the town of Breakdance 2 Electric Boogaloo to test it with a very special person. So, this thing, as cool as it was, didn't really work very well. It was unstable and underpowered, but it did show promise. And James has obviously seen that promise and developed his own. So is it going to work better than this? Or are all these problems baked into the design? And therefore, the Rhino is always going to be a weird machine that looks cool but doesn't really work very well. We shall see. There we are! Take it away, James! Right, so we've got four-wheel steering and all of these uh, O-drives are all velocity controlled. So they should all go exactly the same speed. They should go in a straight line. Right. But we've not got any active steering, so all we've really got is the ability to run the wheels on one side slightly faster. I mean, I don't think that'll be an issue. I mean, obviously that one's got like a hydraulic ram, which yeah. articulates it. But the whole time that was failing, I was never like, the steering's not very good. Oh, yeah, okay. So I don't think you've got anything to worry about that. So and the, I've seen you've got these linear actuators, so you can give it so like we some... Can, yeah, we can transform it to go into proper rhino mode, so we get run on the edges. Look at so that. I've got no real grips on the wheels. It's all smooth edging strip. Yeah. But apart from we've got these edges, which are like the grippy part. So that's... All wheels at the same velocity. Now I'm going to try and steer around by running the right, the uh, left one slightly faster. That's not working too badly. Yeah, I can't, can't pull out of it. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, it's a bit bumpier, but... I 
Oh yeah, these wheels are. Well, that feels slightly better if I go slower. Yeah. Which is what it's supposed to do. Obviously, it's not supposed to re-drive on the rims. You can see the wheels slipping in the grass. If we go slow, it is a tank. It's not a racing car, so. No. So yeah, driving's all right if I go really slow and cautiously with the wheels in this mode. So we've actually got some chance of a grip instead of this smooth edging on the wet grass. So it's not a racing car. If I go really slow, it's all right. And if I'm really careful with the steering, it's just really carefully turn and like steer back out of the turn, then it goes straight again. It doesn't get jackknifed. Oh, this is better. This is going to grip, isn't it? Look at that. Mildly sticky mud test passed. No, I don't I'd like you to go the other way, please. I'd like you to go down there. Probably should have had probably should have had some active steer. <laughs> I guess so. As soon as the wheel slips, then I can't steer anymore. The uh, the old um, articulated ram in the middle is starting to look quite good now. I'll get there eventually. There we go. Just like it depends how soft the ground is. If the ground's soft on three wheels and slippy on the other, then the other wheel just um, just folds in half. Anyway, there we go. It did it in the end. The wheels Going are down. working, I think. See it sliding all over the place. Oh, I was, uh, uh, it kind of like looks, I can't even work out what's, what's what from that. I get the original idea of the design was that, you know, the further they sank in, technically the wider they got. Right. You can imagine how I felt now sat in mine. On this teetering hill. Did you tip over? Eh? You didn't tip over. I nearly did a few times. Oh, God. That's, that's uh, the roll hoop, if anything, needed to be a bit more. Yeah, okay. Um, a bit better than what it was. Are those wheels going to be spinning? Oh, it looks quite a cool. It's jumping through some bushes. I don't think the video is called Fixing Colin Fursey's Biggest Mistake anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be called Great Minds Think Alike. With <laughs> I've learned from your mistakes, Colin, and I've repeated them exactly. <laughs> well, I've got enough talk, it's just there's too much wheel slippage. I think let's get them, like you said, let's put them straps around the steering so it can't oversteer. The motors are super powerful. Like yeah, you've surprise. got no issue with the, with the as long torque. If I can go straight, then I'm alright. I just can't steer. Which is a different problem to the one you had. Yeah, I could steer, I just didn't have any right. talk. Come on, camera. Oh, sorry, I'm filming your hands. Oh, golly. <laughs> Maybe we'll do both. I think this is a hybrid of the, all solutions. Yeah, I can steer better. Well, at least it handles better. It yeah. doesn't steer when I don't want it to so much. There's still wheel slippage. Oh, no, there we go, going the way I don't want it to go again. <laughs> mm. Oh, hang on a minute. What we haven't done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Right, let's try that now. Look at that look. Well, you see that looked quite competent then. Yeah, it's the grass that helps it grip, I think. Look at that look. Yeah, it looks quite competent on here. Go on, up you go. That's better. He says. Off it goes. It went uphill. It did, and it went up a hill, which I know 
my one would not have got up. Great. Definitely. So you have succeeded in hill climbing tick. Hooray, <laughs> let's try the ditch. Now, when I went through this, it, it wasn't this deep in water. In fact, it hardly had any water in it, I don't think. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, that's a lot deeper now. Yeah, that's what we was made for. Go through the mud! So I just made sure my CAN bus connectors and all the actuator motors and all the O-drives and all the electronics is up on tall sticks, which is why it looks like this. So we're going to go in here, which we think is not quite as deep as my Wellington anyway. So hopefully, um, unless I roll it, oh God, I'm stuck here. Okay. Unless I roll it, it'll all be fine. Um, and it is quite unstable as we've seen. So I'm going to do it very cautiously because it's a tank and not a racing car. Remember that. <laughs> okay. Right. I feel like I'm driving a water water wheel or something. It's quite quite wide though. Come on, come on. Oh, I can't turn now. Maybe I'll get there eventually. Yeah, that that's what happened to me. There's a lot of one wheel spinning. It's just jammed against the bank and I can't... Uh, if you go backwards... I'm trying to, but I can't steer. No. <laughs> Come on, Rhino 2. Come on, make it round. Oh, the wheels are so wide. Shall I, shall I pull the forward front round? Hang on a oh, minute. Oh, one minute. I'll, I'll bit to do it now. Here we go. Come on. Right. Ah, you've got the opposite problem <laughs> now. You're on this bank. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's crawling. It's crawling. It's crawling. Oh. Look at it. Now, this is the bit where I properly got stuck. Was trying to get out. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on! Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, that, you see that view there? That looks What's like... That a small duck doing there? That looks beautiful. There's a small duck there, Colin. Oh, yes, this is the, uh, the duck of shame. Put it back in its wilderness. <laughs> so, wait, right, that one's spinning, yeah? So, how come all the others aren't? Is that because they're talked out or well they should be able to they should fail if they go over current but they're all green so because i can see that that yeah, one there is trying know. to spin please tell me your middle name begins with a c why because then you would be jcb no doesn't it's an e no ah! <laughs> at least i don't need the jcb though <laughs> it's not here anyway. <laughs> We're dragging it out with a quad. I think you, yeah, it's out now. Well, do you know what? I mean, I. It's. I mean, it's cut. On paper, it's failed the same as mine did in the ditch. But I think if you had, if you had a proper actual steering on it, I think it would have, it would have easily got yeah, out of that. Yeah, maybe. Look at that! Here we go. Here we go. Is it going to f... Look at that! <gasps> oh! <laughs> that not, I don't want to dip that O-drive in the water. I'm not going in there. No, but look at it! 
it's fairly reasonable. I want to, whoa, 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 get rid of the camber so the motors go higher up. Transformers, That's it, in. you've gained yeah. probably... Yeah. That, that's... Oh no, the back, oh no, it's not stuck. Oh, hang on. How deep is this? I'm not confident. Oh, no, oh that's a point. I, I can't <laughs> run in after to get it. I don't want to get. I don't want to go in there really. I don't know if I can get out now. Can we drag it? No, it's, I'm a, in paddle steamer mode, and now I'm totally stuck. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Rhino two. Oh, 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 ah! That. Is a nervous James no, Bruton seeing that there. I'm dead now. Oh, is it dead? Something's, I think maybe I've dipped the wires in the water. It wasn't supposed to tip that far. I think it's done all right, Jimmy B. I don't know if I can get out of here though. There you are, look, it's kind of self How am I going to get out now, Colin? How am I going to get out of here without falling in the... Well, oh, oh, oh. I've done a bad one. <laughs> it's just... I don't really want to go go anywhere else. It's quite. Um, if it wasn't for that, I could just drive out, couldn't I? <laughs> right, I don't know how we're going to get this out now. I'm right, to, uh, camera so I'm, down. I'm probably going to have to pull it. I think we're going to have to actually yock this out ourselves. <sighs> oh, there you oh. go. Look. Not terrible. Back to safety of not destroying a load of O drives. They are, and now it's a bit cleaner. I do not recommend Rhino wheels. Do you recommend Rhino wheels? Yet again, it's showing promise, but it shows more problems than promise. But saying that, I think if it had like power steering, so if the steering was forced rather than just the guidance yeah, of the a... wheels, I think it definitely would have done fared better in the bog. That's for sure. Yeah. You'd think they were yours having the massive gaps. Yeah, that's what I did. It, it, would, yeah. it would like, you know, grip and paddle Still in. A... They are people. There we go, use tank tracks. That's two attempts now at a failed concept and we probably can say it's still failed. And thanks to Colin. Yeah, if you want to go see my mind do exactly the same thing, but even heavier, yeah. then yeah, I'm sure it'll be a link somewhere in the description. Massive thanks to Colin for letting me go and test the thing and give me a hand there and showing me the original Rhino. Check out his build if you haven't seen it already. I'll put links in the description to his videos in the unlikely event you haven't seen his channel. I'm going to publish all the Canon code for this project as I usually do, all of it's open source so if you want to use any of that in your own projects you can. So if you want to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then patrons and YouTube channel members get all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and all that discussion and Discord benefits. All right that's all for now.